Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss with you some of the pros and cons of both cannabis and CBD. It probably goes without saying that cannabis products like CBD, amongst many others, are becoming increasingly popular due to their proclaimed abilities to lower inflammation and act as anti-anxiety and antidepressants. However, before you go out and buy a bottle of CBD oil or start ingesting cannabis products in any form whatsoever, be sure to watch this full video because throughout this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the less commonly talked about effects of cannabis products. And as you will find out, not all cannabis or CBD products are necessarily good for your health. And you'll also wanna be particularly aware about the form of CBD and other cannabis products that you're using as well as the delivery method that you use to ensure optimal health effects and to avoid a lot of negative health effects that you could otherwise encounter if you're unaware of these things. Now really quick, before we get into the pros and cons of cannabis products, let's just quickly clarify that there is a difference, many differences between cannabis or marijuana as a whole herb plant and the cannabidiolic acids in CBD oil products. So generally speaking, and I'm no expert in the field of cannabis research, I have helped companies in the past create products that contain CBD, so I've done a fair amount of research and have seen a lot of the research around both of these products, and I've also seen what isn't true about both of these products, and that's what I wanna clarify throughout this video, but the general difference between the cannabis plant and the actual cannabidiolic acid, the extract cannabidiolic acids from the cannabis plant, there's many of them, of course, but chemically speaking is that the cannabis plant is gonna also have THC, which is the psychoactive property. Now I know that this is elementary or rudimentary information if you're a cannabis enthusiast, but for those of you that are not, the basic difference between these two things, chemically speaking, is that the cannabis plant is also gonna have the psychoactive THC, which from my research and understanding is what is largely responsible for any alterations of the mood. Whereas the cannabidiolic acid has the primary effect of acting as an anti-inflammatory, mostly through lowering nitric oxide. So this sort of leads us into the pros and cons of these products. Looking first at some of the proven health benefits of cannabis products and specifically the cannabidiolic acids in CBD oil, one of the things that has been clinically proven is that cannabidiolic acids and CBD can lower inflammation. And in my research, this is one of the major benefits that has been verified and proven where a lot of the other ones are more left open to questioning. So we'll get into that in a moment. But as you can see in research like this, CBD oil is a proven anti-inflammatory compound, specifically the acidic form, the cannabidiolic acids or CBDA, actually has been proven to downregulate the expression of COX-2 or cyclooxygenase 2, which is an inflammatory pathway that we talk a lot about on the YouTube channel. It has implications in the development of male pattern baldness and hair loss and a wide variety of inflammatory related conditions. So this is a very beneficial effect, but again, you just wanna make sure that when you're taking CBD, that you're getting the CBDA form for the anti-inflammatory effects. So moving along and sort of tying the anti-inflammatory effects into another clinically proven benefit of CBD, CBD has been found to be beneficial in treating motor dysfunction related to things like Huntington's disease and Parkinson's disease. Now, if you look into some of the research, the mechanisms are still not entirely clear. Even this paper right here states that the mechanisms where CBD exerts its effects are still not completely understood, mainly because several targets have been identified. However, CBD does display anti-inflammatory and antioxidant actions. And both inflammation and oxidative stress are linked to the pathogenesis of various movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. So this just further verifies that CBD oil is a potent anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant. So in my research and understanding of CBD oil, my time spent helping companies develop products with CBD in them, I was actually only able to find research that proved its anti-inflammatory effects. And although there are claims that CBD oil is an anti-anxiety and an antidepressant, there's actually no research that verifies this, at least as of yet. However, sort of moving into some of the potential negative effects of CBD products, there is a possible explanation for CBD oil's relaxant or sort of nervine-like effect. And that is the fact that the cannabis plant actually comes from the same plant species as the hops plant, the humulus lupulus. 
which tells us that the cannabis plant, like the hops plant, is incredibly phytoestrogenic. So estrogen could have a down regulatory effect of the metabolism, it could increase serotonin, and this could give a sedative-like effect. But keep in mind that sedation and relaxation are not necessarily the same thing. So in the same way that drinking a couple of beers might make you feel tired, and this might help you go to sleep, you might ease some anxiety, it's not necessarily doing so in a healthful or productive way. It's ultimately sedating you by down-regulating the metabolism through the increased production of things like serotonin, cortisol, and estrogen, of course. So this brings us to one of the major pitfalls of cannabis products and cannabis in of itself, which is that it's a potent phytoestrogen in an anti androgen substance. So there's actually tons of research that shows that the use of cannabis can decrease testosterone levels, likely by increasing estrogen by being a potent phytoestrogen compound. And if you watch our YouTube channel, you're plenty aware of the negative effects that estrogen can have on the body. Estrogen is a stress hormone. It can stimulate the further production of other stress hormones like cortisol by stimulating the adrenal glands. Estrogen can cause cellular stress, inducing a hypoxic condition by stealing oxygen from the mitochondria. It can lead to edema by increasing the cell's affinity toward water. And although CBD has found to be anti-inflammatory by lowering nitric oxide, it's estrogenic effects and its polyunsaturated fat structure have been found to increase the synthesis of the inflammatory prostaglandins, which are also implicated in the development of male pattern baldness, allergies, and a ton of inflammatory conditions. So cannabis is an interesting nutritional product, and very similarly to the effects of fish oil, from my understanding and research, it just seems to be that the negative effects of cannabis products like fish oil greatly outweigh any of the positive effects, especially when you consider that there are so many other safer alternatives to lowering inflammation, which is one of the primary things that cannabis is used for anyways, at least CBD products. Now, if we're talking about cannabis or marijuana and smoking it to get the psychoactive effects of THC, that's an entirely other video, really. I'm not gonna get too much into that. I can in the future if you guys would like to see that but looking more predominantly at the effects of the cannabidiolic acids, their anti-inflammatory effects, it just seems that these effects are greatly countered by its phytoestrogen effects, its anti-androgen effects, its general stressful effects, and its chemical structure being mostly polyunsaturated is going to, again, just counter some of those anti-inflammatory effects, making it inflammatory in a sense. So it's interesting because there's some of these anti-inflammatory compounds, but then there's these inflammatory compounds. So you're really just sort of rolling the dice, I think, with taking it. But some tips on safe supplementation with CBD. The first thing I'm gonna recommend, as I touched on earlier, is that you get the right form of CBD. You wanna get the acidic form, the CBDA, which is the only form that's really been proven to be anti-inflammatory. And the other thing you're just gonna to wanna to make sure is that when it comes to cannabis products, that you're not smoking it. Considering that most of the bioactive compounds in cannabis are also wrapped in polyunsaturated fat structures, which is a very delicate fat structure, exposing it to heat would just cause it to go rancid and probably become carcinogenic and toxic. So you're not gonna really get the beneficial compounds or effects from smoking it, other than the THC that you would get, so you'd get the psychoactive part of it. But a lot of the CBD, compounds in the cannabis, if you smoke it, would be otherwise destroyed. So you're gonna probably wanna stick to applying it to the skin or taking it in topically. But also be aware, again, of the fact that the CBD oil is usually in hemp oil, which is a highly unsaturated fat, which can you know increase the rate of lipid peroxidation and is generally not good for overall health. So in my view, the safest way to get the anti-inflammatory and beneficial effects of CBD would be to probably make your own coconut oil infused hemp products or cannabis products. So I'm pretty sure there's formulas on the internet where you can take the whole herb and soak it in heated up coconut oil. And this is just because the chemical structure of coconut oil has more integrity, it's a stronger structure and it's not likely to be rancid like hemp oil can be. And then obviously if you're taking a cannabis infused coconut oil, you're not smoking it, so you're gonna be avoiding any oxidation of heat combined with the cannabis product itself. So in conclusion, CBD, specifically the CBDA, can be powerfully anti-inflammatory and lower cyclooxygenase too, but so can a lot of other things that are a lot safer, like nettle root. And it can lower nitric oxide, which can also attribute to its anti-inflammatory effects, but so can ginkgo biloba. And if you look at some of the downsides of the cannabis plant and CBD oil, 
Consider the fact that chemically speaking, it is a polyunsaturated fat. It is a phytoestrogen, one of the most powerful estrogenic plants. So I didn't mention this before, but because of this effect, cannabis in any way can actually impair liver function and put a stress on the liver. And that might further attribute to the estrogenic effects of this product. And again, it has been shown to increase the synthesis of the inflammatory prostaglandins. So being in a pro-estrogen, anti-androgen, stressful, potentially pro-inflammatory substance and only having one possible anti-inflammatory effect, I think that you can come to your own conclusions. But if you do want to experiment with it, again, I would try doing a self-made cannabis infused coconut oil and applying that topically or locally for perhaps the safest way of using that product. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you guys are interested in checking out the research I referenced in this video, I'll link all of that beneath here so you can see for yourself. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody that might find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And for learning more beyond our YouTube channel, be sure to check out our blog, our online tonic herb shop, and our online wellness academy, all which you can find in the description box below.